Howdy, and welcome back to the beginner hunting series. This is part three. If you haven't watched part one and two already, please go ahead and check those out. I'll put a link up there. In part one, we talked about where, what, why, how to hunt. And then in part two, I talked about preparation and practice for a hunt. So here in part three, I'm gonna talk a little bit about scouting. So a lot of people may skip this step, but if you want to be successful and want to have good successful hunts, I recommend you do your research and your scouting. If you didn't already do so, in part one I talked about when you picked out your game, you should research and understand the animal you plan on hunting. You want to know what their habits are. You know, where do they tend to bed down? What times of day do they bed down? When do they like to eat? What do they like to eat? And that's kind of different in each area of the country. You know, some states or even some cities, depending how big your state is, there's different forage and vegetation for your game to eat. So if you go online and do a little bit of research, you know, just Google what do deer like to eat, when do deer bed, or even just, you know, deer habits or something, something of that nature, you'll get a wealth of information and knowledge from that. Texas Parks and Wildlife actually has articles out there on each individual piece of Texas. So they broke it down, I think, into like seven or eight different regions based on vegetation and soil type. And then they have an article that was written that talks about what deer like to eat, where they like to sleep, and some of their habits in that area. So your state may have something similar. If not, you know, there's plenty of information out there that will talk about it. Especially up north, there's a lot of people that do a lot of research and discuss vegetation and what to plant for food plots and those types of things. One of the things that I ran into when I decided to start hunting on public land was some of these parcels are massive and it's hard to figure out where you want to hunt. So I think with what you did in part one here with the research you've just done and what they like to eat and where they like to spend most of their time, where they get their water, you have to take that knowledge and apply it at home first before you go out into the field. So what I recommend doing is you start with maps. Get some satellite images, get some topographic images, or pay the 20 or $30 a year it is for Onyx. I'll put a link in my profile for Onyx as well. That's what I use, but I recommend something so that you can look at what you're going to be hunting. Find the water sources, find the food sources, find potential bedding locations. You know, where are their trails? Because most likely there's gonna be a lot more hunting pressure where there's trails because that's where it's easy for hunters get, to get to. And one of the stats when I was doing my research that I read was something like, most hunters don't go past like half a mile into the woods. And so my suggestion is if you're trying to avoid pressure and want to hunt where there's less people and more animals, I recommend avoiding kind of the main trails or main roads because those are going to be where you're going to see more people. So when you have your maps, you can go ahead and start crossing off uh, some of those areas as not good locations to hunt. Another thing is, so here in Texas where I hunt in the public lands, it's very heavily wooded. And to an extent, you can tell on the maps where you just know you won't be able to get into. And for the most part, that's where you're, depending on the game you're hunting, that's not where they're going to be either. And so you go ahead and start crossing off those things as well. So that's kind of what you need to do with the maps. You know, I like Onyx because it gives you the outline of the public parcel as well as uh, it tells you the names of the people that own the parcels around you in case you have to track a deer over there and need to contact them or something like that. And then you can also drop waypoints and spots on your map to show where you found a food source, a water source, scat, uh, prints, where you're gonna be putting your blind, where you wanna set up. So I think having some sort of map is a big plus. And this is, I, I didn't really talk about this in the preparation part because I assumed when you had your phone, you had your maps. But if you're not using your phone or an app to do this, I would make sure you have maps so you know where you're going. If y'all are interested in me going to more depth on how I do some of my scouting, let me know, leave a comment, and I can maybe do a separate video on me using Onyx and how I approach hunting a certain area. Once you've narrowed down 
where you want to actually focus your hunt at. Maybe you've narrowed it down to a couple hundred acres or maybe a couple hundred acre spots. Whatever it is, you need to get boots on the ground. Because you may have 500 acres that you want to look at, but you don't know if any of them are good. So you need to go out there and check. You need to look for a deer sign or, or whatever animal or game you're hunting. You know, look for rubs, scrapes, water sources, food, you know, prints, scat, anything like that that can tell you that there's actually animals in the area. Because you may think it's a good location on the map, but you may get there and be like, oh, I found water bottles and trash. By the way, pick those up if you see them. But you may realize that, oh, it's not actually that good of a spot because it's going to have a lot of pressure. Or you may think a spot isn't that good, and as you're walking to yours, you realize there's a lot of deer sign. So getting out and, and getting boots on the ground is probably the best thing you can do. And when you're out there, what you want to do is, is you take your maps like i use onyx and, and i can drop those points and you can also track where you go and how you walk so that if you want to do that route again you can do that but i'll drop a pin on pretty much anything i see especially out where i'm hunting in the big woods it's just it's very hard to track and figure out where the animals are going to be and they move around so much so anytime i see some sign or any sign at all i tend to to mark it and, and it's just another spot that maybe I'll put a trail camera up there or, or do something like that. But again, get boots on the ground, start walking out some of this, you know, months before hunting season so that A, you become familiar with the area and B, you can find a good spot to have a successful hunt. This may not be something that you wanna do and you don't really have to, especially on public land, it can be kind of risky and costly. But I recommend setting up trail cameras. If you think there's a good spot where there's a lot of deer, you see some trails, maybe three or four trails coming together, I recommend putting a trail camera there. If you're out on public land, maybe put one up a little bit higher, take a, a climbing stick with you and go up a step and put it high so that nobody could just take it. Or buy a lock, Python, uh, the Python locks from Master Lock. I can put a link in the description below. And those are good locks uh, for trail cameras, so you could do that as well. If you're on your own property, you don't really need to worry about that. And I would just set it up, you know, if you, if it's legal to bait and have a feeder up, you know, put a couple, a couple up by the feeders and, and then some up on trails or where you think bedding is. But, you know, I highly recommend putting up some trail cameras. If you're worried about cost, I did a review on a trail camera that's pretty inexpensive. It's a Cam Park T30 trail camera. And you can see that video up here, but their cameras are, you know, they're good. They're a good budget camera. You know, it's not an Exodus. It's not a spy point. They're not cell cameras. So you get what you pay for a little bit, but the quality is good. It gets good pictures and they're only about 40 or $50. So, you know, if you're putting them up in public land and somebody steals one, it's not like you just lost a $350 camera, you know, but then some of the downfalls with that camera is you're going to get a lot of movement type pictures. So if there's a lot of grass or branches, you know, it's gonna pick that up uh, where some of the nicer cameras may be able to recognize that it's not an animal. But I don't mind going through those for the cost and, and the risk of losing a camera. I, I think it's worth getting some of the cheaper ones. I kind of mentioned this before, but I thought I'd talk about it again. If you're hunting on public land, the number one thing you can do is avoid high pressured areas. Where I hunt here though, there's I think 60, 70,000 acres. So really, I'm not going to run into a lot of people out there. I've seen people comment on, you know, they've been hunting out at that forest for 10, 15 years, and they've never run across somebody. Again, you know, you're, if you're not hunting on a parcel like that, you're most likely going to run across people. So a couple of recommendations on how to avoid that. Walk further in. You know, like I said before, most, most hunters don't go more than a half mile from their car. So I would go deeper into the woods. You tend to avoid a lot more people that way. You know, if you pull up on a spot and there's a car already there, I would go somewhere else. When you're scouting, if you see trash or any trails or sign that someone's been hunting, you know, I, as, as much as it may be tempting to try and go to the spot because maybe they found the honey hole, most likely I would just avoid it and go somewhere where there's not gonna be hunting pressure. If you plan on bow hunting, a lot less people bow hunt than rifle hunt. So you may not have as many issues with 
pressure when you bow hunt. You also may see people tag and put up little markers of how to get to their spots. Uh, I recommend not following them and I also recommend not doing that because the last thing you want is somebody to figure out where your honey hole is and and take away from the hunts that you are having. So that's why I also, you know, the maps I think are a big plus because you mark that on your maps and and show how you get there and don't have to risk somebody following you into the woods. So that's all I really had on scouting. I know it was pretty brief and, and I could go into some more details on this. And I plan on probably doing some more videos when I do some scouting coming up here the next month or two. But if you have any questions or if there's any specific topics that you want me to dive into on scouting, leave a comment or, or shoot me an email. I'll put my email address in the description below and, and we can talk a little further about this. I appreciate everyone watching. If you're interested in the fourth and last part of this video series, I'm going to be talking about the hunt itself and harvesting an animal and what you need to do afterwards. So if you're interested, please subscribe and I'll see y'all next week. Thanks.